Six, hold in position, over. Go, lock and load! I want fire superiority! But why would that be important? And can you really, with a little piece of quite simple mathematics, over double the fighting efficiency of your army? That is death by mathematics. Also, I can kill you with my brain. And with a little more thought, would it enable you to effectively destroy one of the world's most formidable battle tanks? This is the US Army's state-of-the-art tank. Using little more than harsh language. Look, let's take this schematic tank that can fire a shell that has a 10% chance of destroying an identical enemy tank. So if I have two forces of 500 tanks like this squaring off against each other and they exchange a volley of fire, it will on average destroy 10% of the enemy tanks. That is 50 tanks. So if these two forces of identical tanks square off against each other, the ratio of the strength of these two forces is one to one and the first exchange, they wipe out 10% of the enemy. And this goes on till neither side has any tanks left. A pretty harsh war of attrition. But now this is the critical bit. What if one side brings twice as many tanks, a, a ratio of only two to one? How does that affect the outcome of the battle? I mean, is it just a two to one victory? Well, no. Well, clearly in the first round of exchange of fire, they will wipe out 100 tanks but will only have 50 of their tanks wiped out, which is a two to one ratio. But look, in the first round, the ratio of these two forces was two to one. And now in the second round, it's now more like 2.4 to one. And then they exchange fire again. And now in the third round, the ratio of the two forces is three to one. And then in the next round, it's four to one. The blue team are now losing tanks four times as fast as the red. And then it goes on to about seven to one. And in the last round, it's 20 to one. Red Force started with only twice as many tanks, but in this battle, for every tank they lost, they destroyed four times as many enemy tanks. And now comes the part where this is absolutely key in warfare. Imagine that you have two equal forces of 1,000 tanks, but one side decides to split its force into two groups of 500, while the other one stays as a massed formation. The first attack wipes out 500 tanks for the loss of only about 160. And then the second engagement wipes out the remaining 500 tanks for a loss of about 180. And this is the exact nature of divide and conquer. If you make the mistake of dividing your force, even though the on paper assets may be the same as another force, merely by dividing your force into two, you have more than half the fighting efficiency of that force. It's called Lanchester's Law after the guy who worked out the maths early in the 20th century, and it was put to devastating effect in the Second World War. I mean, don't get me wrong, pluck and daring have their moments, but unless it's tempered with the solid, gritty understanding of Lanchester's law, all you will do by engaging an equally equipped but numerically superior force is ensure that you suffer needless losses. And it's far better under those circumstances to retreat and seek a rematch when you have the numerically superior force. Oh yeah, if you don't learn to pick your battles, yeah, gonna have a bad time. Maybe one of the most striking examples of Lanchester's law was the Battle of France. France and Great Britain at the beginning of World War II were on paper a very comparable force to Germany. They had comparable numbers of tanks, they had comparable numbers of troops, and so on. The Germans, however, did two things that enabled them to have this decisive victory over France and Great Britain. The first was they deployed their tanks en masse, while the French deployed theirs in small groups, which is suicidal in view of the maths that we've just looked at. But the Blitzkrieg also struck another crucial blow. You see, war machines may be devastating when well supplied, but when they're not well supplied, they're typically hunks of junk. I mean, as powerful as it is, you deprive an Abrams tank of its fuel supply. And once its fuel runs out, it's just a sitting duck. Or deprive it of its ammo supply. And 50 or so rounds later, it's just a hunk of metal on the battlefield. 
or rob its crew of their food and water supply, and within a few days, the crew will be more interested in staying alive than fighting enemy tanks. And looked at like this, by far the easiest way to defeat such a tank is to deprive it of its supplies, which in many cases can be done with little more than harsh language. Let's get out of here. Get out. And looked at like that, it really does seem that only a fool would try and destroy such a formidable battle wagon when it can actually shoot back at you. And this is the second key factor in this blitzkrieg, is once you've massed your tanks and broken through the enemy lines, you disrupt the enemy's supply lines. And the fighting efficiency of all those units left on the front line when have been deprived of their supplies evaporates. And seeing as the strength of these armies is mostly determined by the strength of these fighting machines, you deprive them of their supplies, these units are in principle defeated without firing a single shot. And these factors can turn what on paper looks like an even fight into a humiliating drubbing. Sure, it's true there were other factors in the Battle of France, but the overwhelming difference between the French and British and Germans was strategy. And the result of that was what was on paper a more or less even conflict resulted in a decisive victory for Germany. So if you want to win, it's simple. Keep your forces concentrated and to deprive the enemy's war machines of their supplies is actually a far easier way of defeating them than actually trying to fight them. However, it must be said that modern technology has come up with a very good reason why you shouldn't concentrate your troops, why you shouldn't put all of your forces in one place. which I must add has never actually been tested on the modern battlefield. Sir, I don't understand. Who needs a knife in a nuke fight anyway? All you gotta do is push a button. Sir. The enemy cannot push a button if you disable his hand. So if what I'm telling you is true, that it's all about getting numerical superiority, how can it be that the British won the Battle of Britain when they were significantly outnumbered? And how can it be that a single American boat can lay claim to being as decisive in the air battles over England as the pluck and daring of the Royal Air Force?